Hello, hello. Tonight's video is the last video ever. It is on rational functions, section 2.6. Alright, so let's do this. I'll try and make it enjoyable. When we're talking about rational expressions, the three things we're going to go through, we're going we're to look for is the y-intercept, asymptotes, there are vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptotes, and zeros. We already know how to find zeros, so we've been doing the past few sections. Alright, so y-intercept. Well, when does the y-intercept happen, right? In general, for all functions, the y-intercept happens when x is equal to zero, right? So, I just have a couple of examples here. The y-intercept for this one is going to be equal to two-thirds, because it's negative two over negative three. If you put in uh, zero for x, it's going to be negative two over negative three, which is two-thirds. For this one, we have negative three-fourths. Alright, and this last one here, well, if you plug it in zero for x, your y-intercept turns out to be negative three. Okay, because you get three over negative one. Okay, and the y-intercept is just, you know, something good to know. Helps us sketch the graph. That's pretty straightforward. Alright, vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are basically values that x cannot be, alright? And so, when can we not plug in something for x? Well, as we always think, we cannot have a denominator equal to zero, because we can't divide by zero. Like, two over zero, can't do it, right? So, for vertical asymptotes, there's going to be a vertical asymptote any time the bottom can be equal to zero. So, if we look at this one, well, when is 4x minus 2 equal to zero? Well, it's when x is equal to one half. So there would be a vertical asymptote at x is equal to one half, because it can't be equal to one half. So the graph will kind of approach that, but it will never pass that line or go to that point. Okay, because if you plug in one half for x, you're going to get something divided by zero. You can't do that. This one is just x on the bottom. So x is zero. There's a vertical asymptote for this graph, because x cannot be zero. And then this last one, <coughs> there's a couple. Because we do x cubed minus x is equal to zero, well, this factors out to be x times x squared minus one. So we see we have vertical asymptotes when x is zero, one, and negative one, because this is actually x times x minus one times x plus one. Okay, so that's kind of like kind of like what we're doing. We're finding roots. Okay, so vertical asymptotes happen when the denominator is equal to zero. All right, horizontal asymptotes. Okay, we're going to be looking at the highest degree of the polynomial. Okay, so this one we're going to look at this x and this x. Okay, the highest degree. And what we're going to do is, well, there's always going to be either one or none. And I'm talking about the highest degree. See, this is the highest degree here. It's to the n power to the n power. All right. I'm actually going to go to the slide first. If the top degree is bigger, there are no horizontal asymptotes. If the bottom degree is bigger, there's a horizontal asymptote at zero. Okay? At y is equal to zero. And if the degrees are the same or equal, there's a horizontal asymptote at A over B. And I'll show you what I mean here. So this one, the top degree, is bigger, right? This is x squared, and this is just x. So if this top is bigger, that means that there is none. Okay? So this one, you see that the highest degree is 3 for both of them. So that means this is going to be A over B. This is your A, this is your B, this is going to be at 1 third. This last one, the bottom is bigger. And what happens when the bottom degree is bigger? That means there's a horizontal asymptote at zero. Okay, see? This is three, and this is like one, so the bottom is bigger. Alright? 
So here's an example. All right. Vertical asymptote. Well, when the vertical asymptotes happen, when x cannot be equal to, when the bottom is equal to 0, so we're going to write 4x squared minus 8 equals 0. It gives us 4x squared is equal to 8. So, x squared is equal to 2. So that's going to be plus or minus the square root of 2. So there will be vertical asymptotes at x is equal to the square root of 2 and x is equal to negative square root of 2. Okay. Horizontal asymptote. Well, this degree is bigger and when we see when the bottom degree is bigger that means there's a, there's a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. Alright, and y intercept is going to be y intercept at 3 eighths because if I plug in 0 for x, right, which is when y intercepts happen, it gives us negative 3 over negative 8, which is 3 eighths. So, we're spending a couple days on this, right, and all I want, our goal is for the first day is to be able to tell where the vertical asymptotes are or where the horizontal asymptotes are, okay? Because knowing that information, you can almost graph these rational functions already. So just a little bit of a summary. Y-intercepts happen when x is equal to 0. You just plug in 0 for x. Vertical asymptotes happen when the bottom is equal to 0, when the denominator is equal to 0, because we cannot divide by 0. So you just take the, the bottom, and you set it equal to 0 and solve for x, and that is where your vertical asymptotes are. In horizontal asymptotes, there's either one or none. And you just look at the highest degree. All right. If they are the same, then it happens at A over B. If the top is bigger, there's none. And if the bottom is bigger, there's one at zero. Pretty straightforward, okay? You just follow those rules. So here are your questions. Again, a thumbs up from Scotty. And he appreciates all of you that have been watching the videos. This is the last one. It's kind of sad. But, oh well.